With OpenAI's record-setting fundraising now official, it appears that the deal has set off a wave of multi-billion dollar AI investment deals. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. This is perhaps completely to be expected, but in the wake of OpenAI announcing their $6.6 billion fundraising deal at a $157 billion post-money valuation, that momentum is being carried right on through into a set of other deals from OpenAI competitors. As we discussed last week, one of the things that made the deal notable was that OpenAI explicitly asked their investors to avoid backing a group of companies which they seem to view as competitive. Those competitors included Elon's XAI, Anthropic, Perplexity, and Glean, among others. And that reads exactly like a list of people who are going back to the well, trying to capture some of this momentum from the OpenAI fundraise to top up their own cash reserves as well. The information has just put out a list of deals that their sources see materializing. XAI, who is of course the maker of Grok, is starting to receive interest from prospective backers for a potential raise to close by the end of the first quarter of next year. The information has recently floated a $40 billion valuation in their own fundraising talks. Perplexity, which most recently raised $250 million at a valuation of $3 billion back in June, has started to receive some inquiries as well. One more big deal that isn't in the OpenAI competitive set necessarily, but which still remains notable, is a new round from enterprise-focused writer, who are looking to raise between $150 million and $200 million at a $1.9 billion valuation. The deal space is heating up significantly enough that some are saying it's reminiscent to the 2021 fundraising boom. Now, while that fundraising period was all about low interest rates during the post-COVID period, this new wave of deal-making is extremely concentrated in just AI. Interestingly, the information also reports that beyond just the excitement and momentum of a hype cycle, quote, investors say they've also been encouraged by the fact that more startups are generating revenue, even though profits may be years away. For example, Writer, which was generating $40 million in annual recurring revenue at the end of September, which was up from $30 million at the end of June. It projects that it will reach $50 million ARR by the end of the year. Eleven Labs is also mentioned by the information as another company that's looking to raise a potential multi-billion dollar valuation. One drag on the potential fundraising is the number of companies whose founders have chosen to resign to go join big tech companies in this sort of weird non-acquisition acquihire model that seems to be becoming more common in AI. Leaders from companies including Inflection, Character, Adept, and Covariant have all taken that path, which isn't exactly a great one when it comes to investors looking for the next runaway success. Anyways, it definitely feels like there is some funding momentum right now, and I will of course keep you posted as those deals start to materialize. Now, speaking of OpenAI, last week's Dev Day was the big topic of conversation, and front of the show, Swix did a great set of polls, which serve as a vibe check for how people were actually interacting with OpenAI's announcements a few days after they were made. When it comes to the real-time API, those who have or haven't tried but were interested or impressed were beating out those who haven't tried and don't care, or have tried and found it meh. The have tried and impressed stood at 14.7% versus the have tried and not impressed at 10.4%, and those who haven't tried but were interested represented 46% of respondents versus 28.8% of those who haven't tried and don't care. ChatGPT Canvas I thought was interesting, and maybe reflects the facts that Swix's audience is more developer-heavy than Normie, because while among those who had tried it more were impressed than were unimpressed, it wasn't by nearly as much as I would have thought. 22% of his respondents had tried it and found it impressive, versus 17.4% who had tried it and found it meh. I think Canvas is a massive UI upgrade, but again, if you were looking for model performance upgrades, this is more or less, strictly speaking, a user experience thing. When it comes to model distillation, the vast majority haven't tried yet, and there were more who don't care than were interested, although not by much. On vision fine-tuning, it was pretty similar. Most people hadn't tried, and more of those who hadn't tried didn't care than were interested. But the big one was the last question inclusive of all recent technical and non-technical news at OpenAI and its competitors. When Swix asked, do you think that OpenAI is headed in the right track? And number two, do you think that Frontier AI as a whole is headed on the right track? 56% said yes to both. 22% said that OpenAI was not on the right track, but Frontier AI was. 4.5% said that OpenAI was on the right track, but Frontier AI as a whole wasn't. And 16.6% said that neither OpenAI nor Frontier AI as a whole were on the right track. 56% of respondents saying that OpenAI is headed in the right track and Frontier AI is headed that direction, basically 60% overall saying OpenAI is headed in the right direction, strikes me as a win given how contentious this company is. Speaking of contentious, our last story today in the headlines, after lots and lots of bluster about how Andreessen Horowitz was going to support the Trump campaign, founding partner Ben Horowitz shared with employees that he planned to donate to Kamala Harris's run for president as well. 
On Twitter, he said, I sent an internal email that Axios got a hold of. Here it is. This is what it is. There is nothing else, no matter how it gets characterized. In that note to the A16Z team, he said, I wanted to give you an update on my political activity. As I mentioned before, Felicia and I have known Vice President Harris for over 10 years, and she has been a great friend to both of us during that time. She's also been a friend to the firm in our early days, helping with several events at my house when we built the original Cultural Leadership Fund network. As a result of our friendship, Felicia and I will be making a significant donation to entities who support the Harris Waltz campaign. From a firm perspective, we continue to only take positions consistent with our little tech agenda and how the various candidates that support or don't support policies to build a strong startup technology industry. Although I have had several conversations with Vice President Harris and her team on their likely tech policies and am encouraged by my belief in her, they have not yet stated what their tech policy will be, so the firm will not be updating its position in that regard. As we stated earlier, the Biden administration has been exceptionally destructive on tech policy across the industry, but especially as it relates to crypto and blockchain and AI. So while I am very hopeful that the Harris administration will be much better, they have not yet stated their intentions. A fairly common response was summed up by Amaran, who responded, I don't quite comprehend the this admin has been destructive, but I'll vote for them in hopes they won't be destructive. But by and large, the response was that it was another example of people playing all sides. So ultimately, the question is, does this mean that Horowitz thinks that a Harris administration would be meaningfully better for tech than a second Biden administration would have been? Or is this simply a reflection of either A, standard rich person opportunism, or B, genuine personal relationships? Only time will tell, but for now, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.